Hello and welcome to another segment of Western Wisconsin Journal. I'm Jamie Johnson, the legal and political correspondent and government correspondent. And today we have somebody who is familiar with our audience, um, Secretary Sheila Harsdorf. Thanks for coming on the show. It's nice to be here, Jamie. Well, it's good to have you on. Now, um, I introduced you as Secretary Harsdorf. It's very hard not to say Senator Harsdorf and before that, Representative Harsdorf. So many of the folks are familiar with, what, almost 30 years that you were in uh, the legislature. But uh, uh, in the last six months, you've had a change. So I wanted to kind of talk about that. Um, you are now Secretary of the Department of Ag, Trade, and Consumer Protection. Yes. Some states divide those agencies up, Wisconsin has chosen to combine them. So now you are a member of the governor's cabinet. And um, I just want to ask, uh, start right off is, with there being the three areas, uh, how does that work? What, what is, you've been on the job six months, how much of your time is devoted in each of those areas? So, so I just wanted to, you know, the intro talking about the different states, I just wanted to touch on, it's interesting because um, we'll, we'll maybe get into this later, but there's a National Association of State Ag Departments. Okay. And when I went to that national meeting, it was interesting to see how much variation there is from state to state within their Department of Ags. Okay. In fact, there's 12 states that actually elect their secretaries. Wow. And, and so, um, so it varies a lot. Some might have 40 employees. And, and we have um, 640 employees. Is that kind of an annual gathering? of? Um, actually, there's like four meetings a year. Oh, really? Yep. That, and so some of them are, are with all the states, and some of them focus on, the like we're in the Midwestern okay. site, um, group. So um, which one so. did you go to? Or well, have you been I've, been, to I've, been at the, I've been at the national one, and that was held in Washington, D.C., where all the states okay. attend. And some call them secretaries, some call them commissioners, some call them directors. Okay. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of variation, but as you said, we do have we are the Ag Department of Agriculture, Trade, and Consumer Protection, and um, and so we don't really uh, the department is really structured in within divisions, and we have six divisions. Okay. And so one of those divisions is the Trade and Consumer Protection Division. That one deals with, uh, for example, when people make calls, uh, consumer protection calls, um, complaints, whether it be landlord, tenant, a uh, product. Um, anything that they call um, to ask for assistance on, that goes to that division. And then we also have animal health as a, as a part of the department. Um, we have uh, our anim animal health division focuses on making sure that we can prevent and be prepared if there is an animal disease outbreak. Okay. Um, and we also have the food safety Food and Recreational Safety Division, and that deals with food safety, and we do inspections and licensing of everything from swimming pools at hotels to dairy farms to restaurants to campgrounds, and and so and and pretty much everything in between. And then we also have Ag, Ag uh, Division of Ag Development, and that they focus on on um, really um, promoting imp uh, exports. And we have an international division uh, bureau within that division. We also have the farm center in that division, and that they take calls from farmers who need um, services regarding it, whether it be financial pl uh, planning, um, succession planning. Okay. If they just need to talk to somebody, obviously it's a challenging time right now. So the farm center is to, there to take calls and to be of, of um, support for those um, people calling. Then we also have the Allison Dairyland program within that division. Um, okay. that, and, and we just had the new Allison Dairyland um, crowned. And she is basically the ambassador for agriculture for is the state. Is that done during Dairy Month then? Uh, that was actually done the later part of May. Yeah. About the third week in May. I noticed some counties have their dairy breakfasts in late May in anticipation yep. of dairy month. So, yep. so okay. we're in the middle. And then the final division is um, the, the uh, Division of Agricultural Resource uh, Management. And so that deals with things like farmland preservation, preserving you know, water, water quality, preserving soils. Um, is that where they would regulate the runoff and so forth? Well, DNR, that DNR? DNR, that's more DNR. Okay. Um, but but we do uh, conservation programs and things like that. Producer-led watershed grants would be in that division. Okay. And so those are the different divisions within the department uh, that affect um, far more than just agriculture. Well, uh, thank you for um, pointing that out. So six, div six divisions and with trade and consumer protection kind of combined in one of those six, but th they tend to be ones where 
consumers out there um, want to know, like, if they have a bad business experience, where to report. So is that that division then? That's the Consumer Protection Division. Okay. And the other thing that the Consumer Protection Division does is we have, we inspect and ensure and, and measure uh, where the weights, we have the weights and measures. And so they go out and they check the gas pumps, make sure the fuel is oh, the right. right octane, and make sure that it is the pump is, is giving you the gas that you're paying for. And so when you pump your gas, that little seal is on there. It will indicate when the last inspection was for that, for that uh, particular pump. And then another question, um, because, and it makes sense with Wisconsin being such a heavy agriculture state to combine agriculture and trade in general, but um, I remember last time Governor Walker was here in town and uh, he came and looked at a tour of the high school just before we were starting our construction. Uh, and he was about to take off for Japan. Um, do you, would you be going on trade trips too? Is that part of being the secretary? You know, that is, um, I'm, I'm not scheduled to go any. I know occasionally the secretaries will go. We do have an international bureau within, ironically, it's not within the division of trade. Um, it's in the ag development division. But okay. we do, a big part of what our department does is, uh, at least a part of that division is um, uh, plan trade missions where we invite businesses to, to participate. And, and that is something that we are very active at, continue to be. So one of the new things that we're doing in that regard is we're in the process of scheduling our first reverse buyer's mission. We have so much to showcase here in Wisconsin, uh, from our farms to our processing plants. And so this fall, we'll, we'll, the first reverse buyer's mission will, will be held where we'll invite people from other countries to come and basically showcase what we have here in the, in the hopes of um, creating, opening new markets for us. Okay. So obviously there's a lot of talk about trade. Right. Uh, what happens in Washington does affect us here, but as, a, as an agency, we know that one of the things that we can do that can be most helpful is really expanding our markets both domestically and internationally. Very good. Well, uh, you mentioned about the impact of the federal government. We're going to get to that area. Um, so how does your time, you mentioned the six divisions, would you say that your time is devoted equally or in these first six months that you've been in this position, have you had a heavier emphasis on one or the others? You know, I think it's, it's hard to, I, I think obviously we're involved uh, and I'm involved as secretary on, uh, with, with every division. Uh, we have regular meetings with the division administrators so that they can brief us. Uh, both we do that one-on-one -on -one and we do that collectively so that others know what's happening in the other divisions. But it might depend upon um, what issue is at hand. For example, as you recall, the legislature this past session just passed legislation authorizing an industrial hemp program. Okay. So that is within our department and so that has taken a lot of staff time. But, but it's the, the staff people within that division within that program area that are, that are putting in uh, a lot of time on individual issue areas. Uh, we deal a lot, uh, but, but I would say this, the time is spread throughout the All different right. divisions. Now we talk about time and resources are usually measuring time and money. And you were appointed within weeks, if not maybe a month or two after the budget was finalized for the next biennium. So with that, and I know I didn't, uh, give you uh, give your staff the the question about the dollars and stuff, but just generally, I'm not going down to the penny or anything. Are is the money uh, that is budgeted for each of the divisions roughly equal, or do you have a couple that where there's higher spending? That that actually varies a lot. Actually, the number of employees varies a lot from division okay. to, to division, um, and so that does vary from from division to, to division. Well, your ag development, where your grants are and so forth, I suppose. Um, that's not as employee-based, but some of the others, the more employees, the more payroll, so then the more money right, in right. that division. The other thing is we are largely a regulatory agency. Okay. Um, outside of the division of ag development, um, a lot of our work is regulatory, so we are enforcing um, both um, what, what, what the legislature um, directs us to do. Okay, and along those lines, because you mentioned earlier when I had asked about, you know, runoff, agricultural runoff, you would think Department of Ag would have some saying, but that's really Department of Natural Resources. So, and yet, there's got to be a lot of overlap in these areas, mm -hmm. areas where I would think that it'd be regulated elsewhere, 
like I would have thought camping would, in state parks would come under maybe something else, but you're talking about private campgrounds that would be regulated by your Right, department. exactly. Um, yeah, the state parks are, are within the Department of Natural Resources. And you know, you touched on, there is a lot of collaboration with different, between agencies. Mm -hmm. For example, on, on numerous agencies we deal, uh, on, on numerous issues we deal with the Department DNR. We also work on, on development, um, on exports and trade missions with the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation. And other issues when it comes with animal health, sometimes animal health issues can cross over with human health, okay. have human health impacts. Right. And in that regard, we might work with the Department of Health Services. And so one of the things that really is important is that as agencies, um, and it's something that the governor encourages us to do, to, to collaborate where we can on issues. Um, in fact, it was interesting because when I was in the legislature, it was a number of years ago that um, it was shortly after, well, it was a number of years after Governor Walker was elected. He, um, I was talking, I was working as a legislator on an issue that affected two different departments. And one of those um, people in that one department said, you know, there really has been a, a, a strong working relationship between the departments and, and, and that's a good thing. And that's the way it should be. Right. Well, I, that's a great segue to, you know, what's this job is like that you've been in for all of six months compared to the job that you had before for almost 30 years, roughly, between being a representative and a senator. So how, what are some of those differences? Because I imagine as um, a legislator, you're many times an advocate for your constituents right. and can be a little bit adversary with those regulatory agencies but again, trying to get everyone to work together. So just I'll let you answer that question since I put it out there. Well, I think, you know, one thing as a legislator, you are there to obviously you're in close contact with your constituents, but you're a lawmaker. And so you are working on introducing bills uh, brought to you by constituents or things that you need to, you think that need to be changed. Um, you are voting on legislation. You're basically working on um, what the laws are. Right. And and so and telling these agencies how to do their job, and directing them. I mean, so as as an agency um, administrator now, you know, we are there to to follow through with what the directive is from the legislature and the mm -hmm. administration. And so um, we're still, you know, one of the things that's in common is we're still there serving people. Right. It's a different. It's it's a larger constituency. But but I believe whether you're appointed, elected or hired to serve in state government or any level of government, you're there to serve the people. Mm -hmm. and, and that's something that I that's have a been- That's great attitude and, and I have been, Jamie, it's been neat to see at the department, um, the state employees are um, at the Department of Ag, and, and we, it's called DATCAP, as you right. know. Um, they are passionate, they are there, very committed to serving the people that we, that we interact with. And they are committed, um, they're dedicated, and it's not just showing up at, at, at eight and leaving at five. Right. Um, they really are committed and, and to, to the job that they have. Well, that's um, good that you said that. And on that cap, as you said, one of the areas that I deal with sometimes in my day job are people who might be victims of what they're perceived as bad trade practices. And they're looking at different civil remedies, which you know, anytime lawyers get involved, um, it's hard for the person to be made whole. And I try to direct them first to the government because many times you can come in. Where on the enforcement mechanism, like for instance, consumer protection, mm -hmm. looking at that division, um, where does the DOJ's work end and where does your agency's work That's start? That's a great question and thanks, yeah. for, thanks for asking that. So, so actually we are, I'm not sure how many states have consumer protection split between two agencies, but you're exactly right. We have um, consumer protection at DATCAP and also there's consumer protection at the Department of Justice. Actually, a, a number of years ago, there was an effort to move everything to the Department of Justice. But how that works is people, um, what we try and, do, try and do at our department is to, when we get the calls and the complaints, we try and resolve that, mediate them right. uh, without litigation. Right. Um, and that's, it's quicker, it's less costly. Um, and so that's the first avenue. Um, some things are not resolved and they end up getting into litigation and that's when we refer them over to the Department of Justice. So there's a, the, there's a strong collaboration and working relationship between the two agencies in that regard as well. Okay, well that makes sense. So uh, 
in the 30 years that you've been in Madison, and for mo obviously 90% of that looking you know, at the agencies from the outside, but you've been familiar with different governors and different cabinets and so forth. What would you say, um, how many of those cabinet posts are generally filled with people who have served like you have in the legislature, whether it's one or two terms or multiple as far, decades? As far as former legislators? Yes. Um, very few. Um, right now, I think there's only there's only myself and uh, former state representative Dan Meyer, who's secretary of the Department of Natural Resources. And and um, you know, as as I recall, looking back to the previous administration under Governor Doyle, I remember one legislator serving as a cabinet secretary. And so it's not there's not that many uh, former legislators. I, I would have thought it would have been more. And then of the others, the non-elected mm -hmm. people who serve in the capacity you are in now. How many are pulled from the private sector with no bureaucratic experience, and how many kind of come up through the ranks? Do you have any sense of you that? You know, right now under the current um, cabinet, uh, it's it's pretty closely to split between the private sector and people who have been in government, okay, um, serving in other agencies, right? Um, and I think if you look at the previous, again, the previous administration, it was a, a quite about a. Uh, pretty much of a balance between the private sector and the government sector. Okay. Um, I think, and, and I think that speaks well. I think there's a, a, one of the things that I think is is helpful is if you have cabinet members um, that uh, that have been a part in the private sector, right? Um, as well as the knowledge from participating, knowing how government works. But it really is good to have that balance, as well as a geographical balance. Right. I, I remember um, being very pleased when. Um, um, Kitty Rhodes was um, appointed as secretary of the Department of Health Services right. because it was because it was important to have someone from this part of the state in the cabinet. That's a great point because uh, I'm thinking way back to like in the 80s when I was in law school and stuff. You had um, a lot of folks that were in the cabinet were from Madison or Milwaukee. Yep. Yep. So. Um, you know, just like looking back, I don't know if you know this, but my brother actually served um, as secretary gonna, yes. uh, of the department. That's Jim. Yes, um, okay. back in um, the early two thousands, okay. and under um, under obviously. How long was he secretary? He was um, two years. Two about years. two years. So you would need Governor Walker to be reelected to outlast <laughs> the number of years your brother was in. Right? Well, you know, we are, we serve at the pleasure of the governor. So. <laughs> well, w since you mentioned that, I thought. You know, it's a fair question. With Governor Walker seeking a third term mm -hmm. this November, um, and we just had what the deadline for nomination papers getting in and so forth. Um, if he were to be reelected, would you plan on continuing on the post? Um, I would welcome the opportunity if okay. if he. Is uh, that have to be a re-appointment um, procedure, or is it just the cabinet continues if the um, person in the Governor's Mansion continues. Um, I believe uh, I believe that just continues, um, but obviously the governor at any point can can choose to, um, you know, if he wants to um, appoint someone else, he can do that. Right. Uh, we just, in fact, um, and sometimes secretaries will choose to leave. We, in right. fact, we just had um, a retirement party this week for um, Secretary John Litcher from with the Department of Corrections. He is leaving, and so the governor has appointed a new person to head that agency. Okay. Um, and so there are there are uh, individuals who who de you know decide at some point that they uh, well the, at the end of a, an election is a very logical point for some people as far as whether they want to continue in Madison or maybe go back to the private sector, whatever they were doing before. Um, you know, just another example, it was just a few months ago, not too long ago, that the secretary of the Department of Administration uh, chose to go, just chose to leave the post. Um, and went, and he came from the private sector, and, and he's, you know, determining what, what, what direction he wants to go now. But, but in some, you know, in, in that case, um, it's, not, it's a personal decision how, late, how long they want to continue to serve in that capacity. Okay. All right. But it would be, yeah, I mean, it would make sense. Uh, to spend this time ramping up and then um, not continuing. But anyway, so far you're liking the job. I'm enjoying it. It's, it's, what do you like about it? You know, it's it's a different aspect, um, but challenges, the challenges, it's issues that have always been near and dear to my heart as a dairy farmer and, mm -hmm. and, sure. and agriculture has been always a big part of my life. And so I enjoy working with the people that have common interests. 
Um, obviously, there's important issues that are important to the future of agriculture. Uh, agriculture is a, main in, uh, a major industry in our state. It's an $88 billion industry, and dairy makes up close to half of that. Um, and, and the neat thing, it's a, it's a major industry, but it's also a very diverse um, industry. You know, we have ginseng. We are the largest ginseng exporter in the nation, coming from central Wisconsin. We have, we're the largest cranberry uh, producer. 64% uh, right. of the cranberries come from Wisconsin. And so it's very diverse. Uh, we're known for our dairy products. Um, you know, let's talk about the dairy because that's the one area of overlap. I you know have a little bit of that in my background, smaller farm that um, we had when I was a kid, and the price of milk. I remember when I was in high school in the late seventies was equal to or maybe even slightly more than what it is now. And I just cannot believe how these farmers are making. Obviously, farms have changed drastically since the seventies as far as the size <laughs> of the operations and everything. But um, and this kind of dovetails into that whole federal, the impact of the federal government, because you know we had price setting for the longest time, the price of milk was based on how close you were to Eau Claire, Wisconsin, right? And now, um, I don't think it is anymore, but yet we haven't seen a big change here in Wisconsin we, um, in that regard. So what do you, how do you feel about the impact of the federal government in that area, and particularly in agriculture? Well, first of all, um, it is a very challenging time in agriculture right now. Um, across commodities, um, obviously with dairy being a big industry here, it's, it's dairy farmers are getting hit especially hard because of the low prices for a long extended period of time. It's not unusual for farmers to, to be able to, you know, they're not unaccustomed to the ups and downs of high and low prices. Right. But this has been low prices for an extended period of time across most of the commodities. With all their costs going up. And right. And yeah. so, it, and, and, and in recognizing that, one of the things that I'm pleased that the governor did this just this week was an, a directing the depart our department, along with the UW system, to create a task force. It's called a Dairy Task Force 2.0 um, to basically pull stakeholders together to have a constructive dialogue, to assess the strengths of our dairy industry, address the uh, challenges and then to make recommendations on what do we need to do to maintain our status as a leading dairy state. And so I'm looking forward to being a part of that. Uh, we're, in the, we're just in the beginning stages of okay. pulling together and, and um, you know, we'll be establishing the membership. Uh, but I think it, it, this is actually modeled after a task force that was held in the late 80s. Okay. And, and when Two, uh, at that time, prices there were low prices, milk prices, uh, oversupply of production, and we were losing farmers. And so m many of the same, you know, we, we're in that same environment now. And, and so um, that task force made 75 recommendations. Many of them were, were implemented, at least in part. And I think that that, those, that effort helped um, create the strong dairy industry that we have here. Okay. And and it's one that we want to maintain. We have a we have a um, very um, uh, developed processing industry, um, and and we are one of the things that they focused on at that time, recommending that we focus on cheese. And we've done that. You know, ninety percent of the milk produced in Wisconsin goes into cheese, and ninety percent of that cheese goes outside of our state. We're known for our specialty cheeses. We have 600 of them. Right. Um, but we have got a very developed dairy industry here, not only um, hi, um, highly efficient, highly productive dairy farmers, but a great processing industry. We also have the um, Center for Dairy Research. We're home to the Dairy Expo, the World Dairy Expo. Right. And those are all things that make us um, the great dairy state. I remember there. being in FFA in high school and going to the Coliseum, Dane County Coliseum, where the World Expo would be, and these cows that um, back then, you know, were producing milk that was like five to ten times what your typical cow in a small family farm was doing. So, it, yeah, it's farming has changed a lot in in those years. Uh, speaking of dairy and having unique, um, now that you're Ag Secretary, have you gotten your invitation yet to Cheese Days in Monroe? I have. Okay. <laughs> and are you going? I think there's more than one cheese day, though. Oh, yeah, but but Monroe's is like, you know, they get what day tens is that? of thousands. It's is usually, that the 25th or something like that, of June? Uh, no, it's the third weekend in September. Oh, 
No, I don't know if I yeah, have. They have a I parade, want, and the do, governor so usually comes. So can you comes get me an invitation for I, that? I will work on that. Yeah, because <laughs> let me see now. This is uh, 2018, right? And yes. I think it's even numbered years. So I'm pretty sure it's this year. Well, it's, you get me an invitation, and I hope I can go. But <laughs> okay. but we have we have you know you, you touched earlier. This is June Dairy Month. Right. And and I came from a dairy breakfast this morning. Okay. And um, it's I encourage people to take advantage of. Dairy breakfasts are a great way to get some great food, enjoy great dairy products. They're na they're right. nutritious and healthy for us. And how how much traveling are you able to do? Because now instead of having just you know part of Pierce County and um, having represented now, you got seventy two counties really. Right. So how much traveling have you been able to do in this six months? You know I've been able to. Um, you know my interest is when I have the opportunity to get out and about the state, I will do that. Um, obviously, this month we're going to as many dairy breakfasts as we can, and um, and you know if you recall the snowstorm, the blizzard that we had in April, um, right. that actually hit us. Uh, it hit the northeast part of the state really hard, where right. we actually had barn roofs collapse. Okay. And so I spent a couple of days. One of those days, the governor was out as well, uh, visiting, touring some of the farms that had um, devastating destruction. Um, in some cases, they lost cattle, um, but but going out and about um, speaking to different groups. Um, so, I look forward to invitations and, and getting out as much as I can. Great. Um, we talked about the cabinet and how some of their backgrounds um, are diverse between public sector and private sector and so forth. Um, how about the demographics as far as female and male? You know, I don't actually have the count, but I know there's quite a few females in the governor's cabinet right now. In fact, the new new um, secretary the, to the Department of Administration is is a woman. She replaced a, a and That's male. a pretty uh, that's a large, huge very, department. Very so. much so. Um, the, uh, the secretary of the Department of Health Services is a female. Um, I have obviously um, uh, at DATCAP. And um, there's, but I don't have the actual count, but I think there's, there's a pretty good balance. And how often does the whole cabinet meet? Um, you know, it, it. We usually meet about every other month. Okay. And and since I've only been that's so far, um, it might it at different times it might get more frequent. Right. Um, but I think either monthly or every other month. And have you been given some um, notice as to when uh, they would like to see you submit budget figures for the next budget? Because I know we're budgeted out now to. Uh, 2019. So we are actually beginning that process within our agencies, and so they have already begun to brief us as far as guidelines and submitting budgets with either no increase or five percent reduction. But our agency, uh, as all agencies, have already begun that process submitting. And what we do for listeners, agencies submit make recommendations to mm -hmm. to the governor and then the governor takes into account those recommendations and decides what he moves forward to the legislature and then it goes through the legislative sure. process and and then and you being kind of new to the department I imagine is there a cadre of leaders that then report to you from each of these divisions we work we take um, input from each division administrator and we also have um, um, some staff that actually focus on the putting the budget together. Okay, but because you need that institutional um, history, absolutely, to know um, you know where the growing areas are and where you're maybe understaffed. And um, but I imagine you know there's always pressure, as you know, to try and keep the spending down. So you know if you have to have a net zero or something, that means if and you need to add in one area, then you got to look for another place, and you rely on a lot of people to. Give that. Uh, it's a, that it's all about maximizing the use of the tax dollar and and um, making sure we're using it efficiently. Excellent. Well, I just want to check my notes here. So, uh, how much of your job is helped or hindered by what's happening in Washington? We had mentioned um, mm -hmm. briefly the dairy thing, but um, you know, in other words, does the federal government stifle or encourage the creativity at the state level? I guess I would look at at more that how. Um, my hope is that we can work collaboratively together. Um, you know, I, I mentioned that as a as a secretary, I'm a member of the National Association of State Ag Departments. So we get together, and when there's agreement on particular on, on any issue, we that that organization becomes involved 
to speak at, in Washington on that issue. But if there's disagreement, then they then they stay they refrain from that. Okay. And so we focus on those issues that really were unified amongst all states. But as far as in general, the federal government, um, obviously when they come down with regulations, um, we need to be in compliance with that. Uh, but there's a number of funding sources that they provide to us, both in um, um, encouraging market development, encouraging exports, um, some conservation programs. So there, so there are different areas where we get federal funds that right. we can that we can put together the specific programs at the at the state level. Um, but you take one of the one of the programs that is coming down is a, is regarding produce safety. You know, when you mm -hmm. have like the romaine oh, yeah. out. Um, outbreak, the lettuce outbreak. Um, With the E. coli, right? Correct. Yeah. Um, and so so there are new regulations coming down um, that that we will be um, obviously working to implement, uh, but they are a directive from the federal. But but obviously with food safety in, in mind. The other th area that we're, where we work together with is with inspections. Uh, meat inspection, meat plants, right. uh, meat processing plants need to be, some are state inspected, some are federal, but we, we have some employees that are actually um, paid in part by the state, part by federal, and then they can, they can do those That's inspections. That's good collaboration. Right. But when, when you think about it, especially the agriculture being the big business it is, and we want it to be. I mean, like you said, we're the leader in cranberries, for instance. Right. But those can't all be consumed in Wisconsin, and so we need uh, to have to kind of welcome a collaborative relationship with the federal government because we want our goods to be consumed in other areas of the country. So Absolutely. And, and you know, I, I look at two of the important divisions in, in the department, uh, the food safety. I think, you know, you know, people can disagree on what is government's role in society, but I think clearly, um, you know, we play a, a, a key role in making sure that consumers can be assured that the food that they're consuming is safe. Right. Um, and, you know, when you look at um, animal and plant disease outbreaks, we're involved in that as well. Um, it's important that we do, and we work collaboratively with federal um, federal members right. of, of, of the of the government um, to work on uh, ensuring that if there is a disease outbreak, we can respond. In fact, um, a couple weeks ago, there was a um, uh, a tabletop exercise. Um, of if there would be a foot and mouth disease. And okay. this was an exercise, I want to emphasize it was an yeah. exercise, but it was 14 states. 14 okay. states collabor collaborated and, and went through an exercise so that we can, if something like that would happen, we can be prepared. Um, I'm sorry to bounce around, because we're almost uh, out of time here, but I just wanted to ask, like, when, he, when you do meet with the Midwest, have you met with the Midwest contingent actually, yet of secretaries? That, that is actually coming up um, this month. It's in about a week. Okay. We'll be going. Well, maybe next time we have you on, we'll ask you how that goes. I'm just curious if there are certain states, like, say, Minnesota, that are going to be closer to um, our views um, just because of, you know, they are also tend to be uh, a lot of dairy, but maybe down in Iowa, there's a lot of pork and corn, for instance. Mm -hmm. So. Um, the other big dairy pocket we know is in California. So I don't know. Have you met the California secretary? Or um, I have not. Okay. Not. All right. Well. But I was just at an event last night in Potosi. Okay. Where it was a, the Livestock Market Association, mm -hmm. and I met some fellow. Um, there were some people there from all and, and the at national actually the World Championship Auctioneer Competition. Oh wow. Um, so that they're all down in Potosi this weekend, and I met some some people from. Um, California, who we were challenging each other who had the better dairy state. Okay, there you go. <laughs> well, good for you. Well, um, thanks for coming on. It was great seeing you again. Uh, congratulations on the new post. And um, it's got to be kind of exciting to have been in one place for that long. Uh, so you're familiar with Madison, but yet in a completely different executive branch instead of the yeah. legislative. Well, so. I'm enjoying it. And it's great to be here. Thanks for the invitation. We'll look forward to, to getting, coming back do that. We'll hope to see you again within the year. All right. Thank, thank you. Sheila. Thanks, Jamie. And thank you for joining us for another segment of Western Wisconsin Journal. I'm Jamie Johnson. Keep watching.